Hey, Dr. C here with you. So, do you ever feel old? <laughs> Does it seem like you can't do what you used to do? Does it feel like you get injured more easily? Like you've lost a lot of physical capability? Um, it's real stuff. These are things that we experience. And it, it feels like a lot of the changes with age are inevitable. And that we've got this ceiling of age that we're butting up against. You know, that we our strength, our, our endurance, our, how well we can just move around and do things, that age holds us back from all of that. I want to go deep in the data. What I've come to realize is that it is true. There are changes that we cannot escape, that age imposes on us. There are ways in which we become more frail. But there's also a lot of ways in which, you know, we're not always at our maximal capacity, things that we can fix. You know, we've got room to improve upon our strength and our health, and it's sometimes not clear if age is what's holding us back or if, if there's things we could do that can make a difference. You know, The aging part, the inevitable part, it's pretty fatalistic. The extent to which that is our, our ceiling, you know, our functional ceiling, there's nothing we can do about that. You know, We can't change our, our biological age. So how much of it is stuff that we have room to improve upon? How much of it do we just have to accept and deal with? And that's what I want to talk about here. So... I want to pull up this image, and I want to really explain. And I want to really use this as a template for some of the discussion. Uh, this is from an excellent, excellent book. Uh, this is called Exercised by Daniel Lieberman. And this book shows our physical performance and our, our, how age plays a part on that. So the, the, vertical, the vertical axis here, uh, the, the x-axis, the x this is maximum physical performance. And then the y-axis is how age changes upon that. So the very bottom line, which is moving from left to right, the societal average, this is typically the amount of physical performance that someone has just by default, just by being a modern human, <laughs> modern domesticated primate. And we can see how that increases as we get into adulthood. You know, we got more strength when we're 20 than we do when we're 10. We just got more mass, so we can do more then. But then we see how this line slopes down. And as we age, how much we can do diminishes. Now, above the societal average, we see a typical individual who's not trained, who's not, who's not really an exerciser. And that's the dashed line next up. If we move up a little higher, we see typical trained individual. And in the top ceiling, this is a world-class athlete. So now, that's pretty much the ceiling. You know, there's, there's not a large amount of room for improvement on performance in world-class athletes. There may be some, but it's not big. <laughs> They're pretty close to what's, what the limits are of what's humanly possible. And we see that world-class athletes, their performance gets worse as they age. And that's why that very top slope also goes down, like the lower slopes do. But the important thing to see is the, the gap, you know, the distance between those two things. So like look at age 30, and there's that vertical line. And that vertical line, the height of that vertical line, that's the difference between being trained and being untrained. You know, being fit, you know, exercising regularly, and how much potential you have from that versus those who are not. So follow along with me and look at the individual, the typical untrained individual, and look at where, how high their maximum performance is at their peak, uh, say age 30, and compare how high that is to the oldest marker for a trained individual. So the dash line descending for the individual example trained, how, where that intersects the x-axis at age 70, and follow that over and compare that against the peak performance for an untrained 30-year-old. What you see is that that 70-year-old athlete has twice the physical potential of the untrained 30-year-old person. <laughs> so we do, we do compromise from age, but that's not the barrier for most of us. If you're someone who's not maximally trained, then these arrows showing movement in all direction, you could be in a lower level of training and you can go up, you can get stronger, you can have more endurance, more physical capacity, more balance, you know, more coordination. You can do more stuff even if you're older, you know? If you're, and if you're at that world-class limit, you can do a lot of stuff. You may not be able to do better than you did in your past, but you can still do a whole lot better than 
99.99% of the rest of the world's population. You can do a lot. You can do just fine. You can certainly walk around the block. You can certainly do your own basic house tasks. You can pick stuff up. You know, in terms of functional limitations, those are not things that aging athletes are struggling with. You know, they're struggling with getting a little bit slower in their top performance, but they're able to get around the house just fine, thank you. <laughs> that's not the problem. So this graph is inspiring to me for so many reasons, but that's, that's the big one. Most of us are near this individual example of being untrained, or perhaps we're moderately trained. You know, we do some exercise, we do what we should, but we've got a lot of room in which we could do better. And this is not just how fast can we run down the track, you know? That's fine, that's fun. But this is also about how long we can stay mentally alert. You know, this is about whether we get exhausted in the afternoon. You know, how well your body makes energy for performance is the same thing in all domains. And that performance could be a, you know, a master's competition, or it could be time with the grandkids and able to keep up with them. Or it could be, you know, really diving deep into a fiction story and really mentally following along with it. Or it could be just doing things around your house, your basic projects. Those are all measures of performance. And if you're tired and you're wiped out, you can get stronger and exercise can be an important part of that. And we often think that where our limits are age. You know, the model of what's typical for 50 now is very different than what it was when, when I was younger. I remember as a kid seeing people who were, you know, 50 and 60, and they had expectations of something very different. You know, their expectations were that <clears throat> by that point, a lot of life was being in your chair and, and lounging. You know, you weren't expected to do a whole lot more than that. And now, you know, 50 is, is nothing. Um, I wish I could use a different example. I don't want to boast, but uh, I, I'm 52, and quite recently, I bested my 23-year-old performance for the 10K distance. And about a year or so ago, I completely bested my lifelong marathon performance, you know? So I'm, I'm getting faster. Now, here's the thing. This, I'm actually a good example here because I'm not a world-class athlete, you know? I'm not at the limits of my performance. I lost decades of training due to surgeries related to my cerebral palsy. And so I was still active, but I wasn't maximally trained. So right now, as, as a middle-aged to older middle-aged adult, I've got a lot of room to get stronger and fitter. And that's really cool. You know, 50 is not holding me back. It's just really how smart, how well that I'm training that could, that could hold me back. But all too often, I see people who are 50s, 60s, and they're thinking that they're being held back because of age. They're not. You know, we're, we're being held back because we're not maximally trained. If you're a world-class athlete, maybe you're being held back because of your age. But if you aren't, you've got room to get closer to that. And again, that's more than just laps around the track. That's laps around the track of life. That's all the things that are important to you. You can do better when you're fit and strong. Now, I want to switch over and talk about a research study because the next thing I hear is, well, but I'm too old to start. You know, like this is cool stuff had I started in my 40s or in my 30s perhaps, but now I'm 60, 70, 80. It's too late to make a difference. Is it? <laughs> I want to push back on that. I'm not going to buy into that. So this is an awesome story. Uh, maximal oxygen consumption and performance in a centenarian cyclist. So oxygen performance, your VO2 max, how much oxygen you can convert to energy at a given point in time. That's one of the biggest markers of your vitality. You know, that's your energy. That's how well you can burn fat for fuel. You know, that's how long you can stay focused on something mentally. That's how long you go before you get physically wiped out. That's how long you live. That's how likely you are to get chronic disease. That ties to all these things. And your aerobic training improves your VO2 max. And that can improve pretty much wherever you are in life, however old you are, whatever challenges you've had. So in this study, they took a gentleman who already had the one hour record for track cycling for those over 100 years old. <laughs> so let that sink in. I'm sure there's not a large number of people who compete at that event, but there's some, right? So it's how far can you go in an hour? 
and that's it. So the, the faster speed you can maintain consistently, the more distance you cover, the more power you're putting out, the more your VO2 max is. So this gentleman had an existing record for an hour at age 100, and his performance was tracked pretty well. They looked at his VO2 max, they looked at his peak hour out power output, and then he entered a more structured training regime for two years. So between age 101 and 103, <laughs> this is just beautiful. And by age 103, by more structured training, he improved on all these metrics by a lot. Like his VO2 max was up 15, 20%. He had a big change in that. His power output, I'm looking at his wattage right now. He was putting out 130 watts over the course of an hour. That's pretty solid. That's not bad. You know, uh, the world's like, like, for example, Lance Armstrong at his peak, he would put out 500 watts in an hour. Typical untrained person probably couldn't put out more than 50, 60 watts for an hour if they weren't, if they weren't trained in some way. So this guy's doing fine. He's 103. And between 101 and 103, he made, and he was already trained. He was already a 101 year old athlete. And over the course of the next couple of years, he ramped up his fitness to a clearly measurable degree. <laughs> so no excuses, <laughs> no excuses. Yeah, whatever they are, they may be excuses here, but they're not excuses in the real world. You know, you can get stronger, you can get fitter. This guy did at 101 years old. He got fitter over the following years. <laughs> so yeah, please let that sink in and just know that what we think of as age holding us back isn't. It's we're being held back for things that we have control over. There are things that we can do something about, things that we can improve upon. So that's an awesome, exciting message of hope. And I'm just really happy to share that with you. All right, Dr. C, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.